All right, all right, all right. It is four o'clock. It is Thursday. It is time for what? Presentation. Oh, yeah. Is there anybody that didn't realize that today was your individual presentation? Good. Because we have talked a bit for like how many weeks now? Forever and ever, ever. I did get an email from somebody who says, Hey, I didn't realize that today was presentation day. And I'm thinking, Really? You remember me saying, Raise your hand if you hear me. Uh, it's okay. Uh, everybody prepared for a great show today? Come on, is everybody prepared for a great show today? Yeah. 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 Presentation day, show and tell, dog and phone, go what you want. Y'all gonna get up here and you can show off. You have all the awesome stuff you learned in class and what you learned being here. Right? So, my job is done. Well, at least done fun so far. Right? Uh, my job is to, be, uh, has been to help you understand uh, yourself as a creator, uh, to understand what creativity means, to understand how we apply innovation to business. And now, y'all have come up with a great idea of how you will apply all of this to a concept that you have, right? Who has the best idea here? Raise your hand if you think you have the best idea. I didn't watch that idea. Right, so. All right, just go first. There we go. The way this is how it's going to work. Right? I'm going to get out of the way. He's going to get in the way. And uh, how long do we have? A minute. You have a minute. Plus or minus 10 seconds. I will be uh, using a stopwatch. Right, so um, you can go as short as 50 seconds, because that's the minus 10 seconds. Listen up, please. You can go as long as one minute and 10 seconds. If you go a second under and a second over, what happens? How many points? Anybody? One second, one point for every second that you are out of those parameters. Okay? Plus or minus, right? So between 50 and a minute 10. Right? There you go. Uh, and uh, and that's how it's going to work. We're going to get up and do a presentation. Uh, we're going to be very mindful and respectful. And uh, you're not going to be checking anything because I can't think of anything more important than you paying attention to your colleagues that are up here pitching their big idea, just like you're going to expect them to pay attention to you and your genius idea. Question? No tennis today. Your tennis is if you showed up and did a presentation. Can we time ourselves while we're going on? You can time yourselves. You can do whatever you want to. All of this is yours. All the technology, the presentation, which bank, however you want to do it. This is yours. This is your moment. I expect you to shine. Okay, any other questions? All right, again, I will reiterate. Please be respectful. Don't like to be the guy calling out somebody in front of somebody else that isn't paying uh, proper respect and attention. Remember, this is a big deal, right? Some of y'all, you know, think this is, comes easy. To some other people, this is a challenge, right? Be supportive, right? Be like, be the cool student like you would want somebody to be if you were having a challenge, right? And uh, and give your feedback, right? After the presentation, you're going to go to Course Key, proud sponsors of 253, uh, and uh, you're going to evaluate who has just presented. So review your presentation, you get to it. I'll give you a cue. I'm going to send the evaluation course key. It's going to pop up on your device, and we will see real-time results. You will know how well your colleagues believe that you did in the school of 1 to 10. Right? It doesn't have uh, no bearing at this moment on your score, but I thought it would be great to have some real-time feedback on, uh, on how well you did. It. Any other questions before we get started? Yeah, it'll pop up. As soon as they're done, I'll do the send, and it should come up right away. Right, then I'll recycle that same evaluation. Um, I was told by uh, by Ryan Korsky that the uh, the numbers will appear in random order because uh, we're kind of misusing this a little bit. There's not a function currently in Korsky to be able to evaluate something one to ten. So you'll see like three, six, five, one. Just hunt down the number two. This isn't that big. Okay. Any other questions? Everybody, listen. I'm really excited to see your work. I'm very, very interested in in your great ideas. And, uh, and we are all here to support you. That is the culture that we have built in this class. And, uh, and please, man, this is your time uh, as an individual to shine. And this is your time as a class to shine, right? Let's see what you've learned. Stage is yours. Give me a second to uh, set up. I'm going to please introduce yourself. 
and uh, we'll get started here. Oh, by the way, we are live. If anybody shared the link out, your parents can watch you, see what you've learned in this class. This will be recorded uh, for posterity and for your reference, because I'm always amazed at people like, I thought I killed it. I'm like, let's check you out on the tape. So uh, that's what we've got. I've got a stopwatch up. Whenever you're ready, just let us know. One twenty seven. <laughs> All right, now let's see. Send. All right. Please go to course key and uh, please vote now. There we go, coming in. Yeah, it's on the check poll, please. <laughs> Okay, who's going next? Let's get it set up, we're back here. All right, let's see. Uh, uh, you're coming in right about an eight. Right about an eight you got. Yeah, from one to 10. Yeah, everybody's coming in more. Most people got eight, you got some nines and tens. There we go, let's go and close out. Yeah, it's on. Uh huh. All right. I'm sorry. Are you ready? All right, guys. So, hey, my name's Josue. Quick poll right now. Raise your hands if you guys like pizza. Okay. Most of the time you get it at a restaurant, right? Or your, your bike goes in at Bonds or a grocery store. Or usually, though, you have to do it right? on the phone, or app on the phone, or on the computer, you just can't place the order real quick. Continue to serve pizza. Be nice, right? All right, raise your hand if you guys like desserts. I'm talking about chocolate, cheesecake, eyes, donuts, right? How sick would it be if you could get that same delivery? My business idea is called Dope and Stove. Dope and Stove makes a delivery service. Delivery service. And it can be 24 hours a day and delivery. Like it's a big gap in the market. I feel like you might need to be a little bit lazier, a little bit better, but a lot happier. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and start with the first question. 
54 seconds. Do you have your uh, your memo? You have a hard copy? Okay. Who's up next? Yeah. There you go. Hmm? The files are to upload. The files are available. That's for download, no? You have to go to submit. Uh, uh, so, uh, ready? <laughs> go on check call. Sure. No, no, because I shut it down. Yeah, we're going to go cycle through these, trying to keep everybody moving quickly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so here, let's do our quick evaluation. Here and send so we can get feedback on the dough. Here, send. All right, go ahead and rate them. Let me think about the donuts. Pulling a strong nine so far. Go get your last votes in. And we're closing in three. Two, one, stop pull. You got a nine. Class loves the donuts. All right, next up. Good afternoon, class. My name is Patrick. We're here to tell you today about fear tests. Before I do that, let me take a quick poll. How many people own a smartphone here? How many people commute? Everybody, pretty much the majority. Fear text, here's what it is it's an app. You can download it on your phone and listen to audiobooks while you drive. You're thinking, oh, there's already audiobooks and all, but it's even better. You can listen to textbooks so there's no excuse to not get the reading done. It helps out the professor, so he gets a woman fuzzy. Hey, I gave my students every possibility to listen to a textbook or to a uh, textbook. Book. But I don't like listening to audiobooks. That's okay. You can visually watch somebody uh, reading it, or you can even read it electronically. All right. Well, that's all the time I got. So you guys have a great day. Thank you. Well, technically, you had another 16 seconds because uh, you came into 54 as well. Okay. Who's up next? Yep. Okay. All right, we're going to do the advisory. Thank you. All right, and we'll do this. And let's do our rating as Rome's getting ready. And check your course key. Please do a refresh. Vote now. Get the USB. You have it on USB. Yeah. All right, and you've come in at an eight. You've got an eight. Okay, stop and pull. Yeah. 
Okay, hi. Uh, my name is Roman, and I want to talk today about a new way to mount your uh, smartphones and tablets. It's the new toilets for smartphones and tablets. Over uh, here, you see an iMac with an attached new toilet. That's my product. Um, and it's like a, a magnet. And here you have an iPhone with an attachment of it on the back uh, on the back cover. And uh, as you see, the bolts of the iMac were that on the net. Um, yeah, because of the technical specifications, you see on the back of the cover of the iPhone is the attachment disc. And um, it, uh, it's like a magnetic shielding. It comes with a three and a piece of tape. Um, so you can just take it there with music. It works like this. You see here is the magnet. That's your uh, shield. And on this side where the smartphone is, there is no uh, magnetic radiation. So your smartphone doesn't get destroyed. Um, yeah, that's how you can use it. By right next to a wall, you just uh, yeah, fit it there and it looks smoothly and crowded. Navigation system in the car, we all know that. It's better than the suction cup. Suction cup can be a big survey, they can tell you, they fall down, whatever. Um, yeah, pick in a car, in the kitchen, and that's pricing 20 bucks. You want that? Thank you. One twenty two. And please go to course key and evaluate now. And I'll tell you what, I'll let you all stuff, please, who's going to go up next. Just figure out who's going to go up next and uh, get yourself set up. Well, not. All right, please get the last year vote again. And we're closing down in three, two, one. Coming in a nine. Got a nine. How many of you guys like carne asada Mexican food? How many of you guys pets? Pets, you know, animals? Yeah. <laughs> How many of you guys like rabbits? <laughs> I got an idea for you guys. And uh, we eat this a lot in Mexico. It's called white rabbit. <laughs> Uh, time to sell to ten dollars a whole rabbit, <laughs> carne asada, uh, with salsa, beans, tortillas, and beer. Thanks. Thirty-one. Please vote now. Yeah, keyboard is uh, open up. Yeah. <laughs> Who's up next? Let's go. Y'all self-police figured out how this is going to work. Everybody's got to go. All right. We're all over the board on this one. Somebody give you a one. Somebody give you a ten. You came in somewhere around a six. Guess you like rabbits. 
All right. Now, please, if you will, remember to introduce yourself so uh, people know who you are. Give your ideas and uh, keep moving forward. No, you have, uh, do you have a um, memo? Give you a memo? Print out? No? No. Okay. All right. Uh, slideshow uh, at the top, slideshow and this last slideshow. Uh, at the top, how about the top? The other top. Is it Germany? Metal, we can't see it right there. Yeah, you know, metal, the other slideshow. Yeah, play from start. Then just click. Um, the parents have kindergarten spots, and the kids are happy to go through kindergarten. 109. All right, please rate the presentation. Just a little bit so we can get a little better audio. And we have our first 10 of the evening. <laughs> yep. or my idea is a service called Tab Up. And Tab Up is a smartphone app that you use when you go out to the club or the bar. So a lot of times when you go out, you'll get really drunk and you'll forget to grab your card when you leave and close your tab. So with the uh, smartphone app, you can have the bartender just scan your phone instead of actually giving them your credit or your debit card. And this will help eliminate the hassle of having to go back for your card the next day. And sometimes the bar or the club might also charge a fee for having to hold your card overnight. So it'll also eliminate that problem of having to pay the holding fee. And that is my idea. OK, 51 seconds. Please go to Korski. Next up, let's please keep that just moving. You see somebody uh, exit out. Please try to figure out who will be going next. Please, thank you. Kelly, uh, your class has rated you as an eight for your presentation. Stop the poll. Here, yeah. 
Is there anything that I got else that I have to do or to connect it to the dislike other than plug it in? Just plug it on the side and then hit the button that says now. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's on your desktop. You gotta. Yeah, they have to drag you over. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Close it at the second one. Yeah. yeah. You can also go under system preps and hit mirror display. Oh, okay, that's that. Under go uh, system preps display mirror display under arrangement. I think it is. Sorry, I'm super challenged. On the button. There you go. Share. Show mirroring option. Mirror on the bottom left there, mirror displays. You think it's all that works for Apple? Yeah. Okay. 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 So if everyone can take a look at my shoes, this is the typical height of a heel that everybody goes out in clubs with. Now, a lot of women have this issue where they are uncomfortable, they're tired of wearing their heels, there's a lot of pain involved in this. And basically, what I have created is a way to resolve this issue while still looking great. So my product is known as a flat. It's going to be a fold, foldable flat. You find it in a tube, and you're able to gain it from a bending machine. This ultimately allows you to continue on with your night. It allows you to wear the heels that you want to. But for example, if you wanted to go ahead and let go and uh, purchase one of these, it's about $5 for, from the vending machine really easy to purchase and ultimately guys you don't have your girlfriends complaining and asking to wear your shoes girls you don't have to walk on the pavement and deal with all the glass and things that you may find and ultimately this is my resolution for this issue that is very common for us all thank you very nice 101 please rate her performance today Thank you very much. And as a reminder, please state your name at the beginning of the presentation so everybody knows who you are. And we can make little notes. So get notes from everybody like, hey, I like the presentation. Sorry, well, I'm like, um, in the USB folks. Should I? Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and your class is evaluated. Got a 10. Number 10 of the night. Round of applause for 10. Um, where does USB come up? gentlemen, I'm Dan with Extreme Gene. Uh, Extreme Gene is an extreme sports website that collates all the extreme sports into one user-friendly website. So we will offer all customers, usually new to the sports, we will offer them the opportunity to experience these life-changing experiences. Now we're different than the experience days you have because we want repeat customs, so we want you to come back. We will take brokerage fee, about 15%. 
of what's passed on to the uh, the end event provider. Um, so basically, we'll allow uploading of your videos, your experiences, um, again bringing people back, and we'll have advertisements um, from relevant parties like GoPro, North Face, the stereotypical um, adrenaline companies. Thank you very much. One on one. Please evaluate your performance. <clears throat> then you got your third ten of the evening. Very well. Gotcha. Icon on top. <laughs> and then hit the button that says lap. There you go. My name is Janet Evans, and my idea is projection, hologram, innovative practices for low cost, high design customer relations. The concept is imagine traffic congestion due to accidents being and being able to minimize that. The 3D hologram will reduce traffic congestion while improving public safety. Using the charge coupled device, which is would enable high resolution would wrap around the actual accident itself. As you see on the display, that is an example of exactly what will be displayed with the hologram using the police department's logos. The innovativeness of the soft dual bendable wireless device would enable the projection of a logo as you see here. In conclusion, the projection hologram I'm sorry. The return on investment would be the pre-existing holograms and also being able to keep the cost down because of the pre-existing holograms. In conclusion, the hologram projection device would sustain low cost, high design, and also enabling pre-existing relationships with customers. Thank you. Jenny came in at 122. All right, please evaluate Janet's presentation. Go last, last uh, evaluations in, please. Three, two, thank you. And Janet, you have been rated at seven today. Thank you. Can I get the document camera? Yeah, you hit the button that says dock on that pan. <laughs> okay, cleverly disguised <laughs> as the dock button. Good. Ready? 
All right, hello everybody. My name is Nicole Ferrari, and my intention is to change the water sport industry through creativity and innovation. Now, how many of you guys like to swim or surf or participate in any type of water sport in general? But keep your hands up. Hate the burning, itching eyes that you get after being in the water for a long time. All right, great. Well, I'm here today to introduce my product, Aqualines, which is the first contact lens just, uh, designed specifically for water sport athletes. This contact lens will not only uh, help defer the effects of chlorine, but unbalanced pH levels, salt water, and extreme UV exposure. So stop wasting your money on a temporary solution and buy aqua lens. <laughs> <laughs> All right, please evaluate Nicole's presentation. Nicole, we came in at 58 seconds. Don't be bashful. Everybody's going. Okay, I'll keep it going so you go home. Yeah. Cole, you've been rated as 10. Very good. Where's the keyboard? I'm sorry? Oh, sorry. Mine has the connection. It's also good. Yeah, the Mac is up there, you can just use that. I'll get it going. Yeah, no pressure. Everybody's watching. No. <laughs> <laughs> How many people this is on the side? How many people get really nervous when you're up there and like and this doesn't go well for you? <laughs> I am ready to go. Okay, so my name is Ryan Eagle, and I have the clean car skin for you guys. So basically, I all of our cars get dirty, and I 
if you're like me, you wash your car by hand. It can take a while if your car looks a car like that, you know. Um, so I thought to myself, I was like, what can I do? So my idea was, what if there was some way to make the surface of the car, all surfaces, repel water and dirt? So I came up with a vision that my um, that would be like a film that would repel uh, the dirt and water. So you have to just rinse it and it all falls off. Um, and it maintains the finish of your car as well. So the process is it would be the same, um, kind of like window temp, but for your paint and all the surfaces on your car. So it repels uh, all the dirt and the water. And this leaves your car clean. All you have to do is rinse it off and everything literally falls off your car. So that is the clean car skin. Any questions? All right, please read Ryan Yeah. Give <laughs> me 48, my friend. Thank you. Right. You guys can see that. Uh, but yeah, anyway. Uh, my name is James Spicer. I am presenting Musify. Uh, the concept is I'm always on YouTube looking at music, searching for new music, uh, trying to find new artists and new sounds to just be inspired by, I guess, in general. Uh, music's a big part of my life. Uh, so I'm mm -hmm. frustrated that there aren't applications or ways in which we can be less in, of an active search and be more of just the information is given to you. So I want to develop an app that would basically, uh, every time you open up YouTube, it's there sitting in the corner. You can expand or make it smaller, and it's constantly making playlists as you're listening. So just use YouTube how you normally do with the app, and eventually it will start suggesting, hey, you like this artist? People who like that artist also like this artist. And it works with uh, music blogs and channels and other thought leaders in the music community uh, that you're interested in to make sure that you are getting the freshest material and uh, stuff straight from mid-minor labels, people that you wouldn't normally be having this stuff thrown in your face. Like when you turn on the radio, you don't hear these people. But when you go to YouTube, they will be presented to you. Uh, it's going to take a lot of development, but obviously any app would. Thank you. All right, please rate them now. All right, get your last votes in, please. Three, two. They like you as a nine. Okay. Oh, nine. <laughs> there. Very good. I don't know. Did you, did you program it to do that? No. no. Probably is not supposed to do that. There. there it is again. And there it is. Yeah, that's going to be challenging. Okay, don't touch it. Okay. All right, guys. My name is Erin. Um, I have a question for all of you guys. Have you ever been at home or drinking with friends and you run out of beer? Has it ever happened? Okay, so when you run out of beer, what's your next step? Usually, oh, you look to the fridge. And the fridge is empty, you have no food either. So, <laughs> my application is not only gonna be a beer delivery service, you can order any kind of dirty rack of domestic beer, but it's also gonna be any kind of fast food change or, or restaurant that is open at the time you request. 
So you can be hungry or thirsty and be satisfied. Thanks. <laughs> Right. All right. Let's rate Aaron's presentation. Twenty quick seconds. Oh. <laughs> Goes fast, doesn't it? Yeah. Or not fast enough. Thank you. Are you asking to speak faster than you? Right, Aaron. Ooh, you coming in at a nine. At a nine. Strong eights and eights, nines, tens. Average out about a nine. AKA the other ten is uh <coughs> 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 Good morning, everyone. My name is Samish, and let me start off by asking a question. Who in here has volunteered before? Thank you. So when I was in high school, I volunteered for about 80 hours, and I did so at an active living community, which is basically a fancy word for retirement home for people over the age of 65. And a lot of my time was spent playing, uh, watching football with the fellas and playing bingo with the ladies. And it's been five years since then, and I haven't volunteered once. Not because I haven't wanted to, but because I don't really know where to start like what nonprofits are looking for volunteers, uh, where they're located, how do I get there, who's the point of contact. That's where Give Back comes in. It's a nonprofit online marketplace that connects volunteers with nonprofit organizations. Uh, it's being called the Airbnb for volunteers, and our goal is to disrupt the traditional volunteer space through social networking. Uh, millennials are slaves to their technology, and our, our goal is to use that as a positive and uh, build a better sense of community uh, through making it, by making it easier to volunteer. So who wants to join us in our mission to build a better future? Thank you. All right. Let's do your evaluation. So we should give in a 106. Okay, whoever is going up next, Get on up. Please get the rest of your evaluations in. You are a clear 10 by a landslide. Well done. Right? 10? Very good. Ten. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Fernando Gutierrez Ladron de Guevara, and I've already wasted five seconds by saying that. And I'm going to present to you my mystery item. As you can see, everyone is dressing all fancily with their blazers and their crap, and I'm just wearing sweatpants that I bought yesterday because I needed them. Why? Because comfort. And do you know what causes discomfort? Burning your tongue with spicy food. <laughs> you feel? That is why we need in our lives the spice spoon, which is this wonderful device 
that works exactly this way. You know, we have pH sensors, temperature sensors, the on and off button for everything, viscosity, salinity, PS, who cares about pH? But anyway, so now we have a capsaicin sensor, which is the thing that makes your food spicy. Then we have five levels of alert. White, which means no spices. Green, condiments that are not spices, such as pepper. Yellow, red, and flashing red, which means drop it and run for your life. Thank you. <laughs> Please do your evaluation of the spicy spoon. Time, Time is 57.41. Well done, Matthew. <laughs> Get the last two votes in, please. I appreciate everybody voting. And your innovation has earned a 10. There you go. Round five, very good. Investors line up to the back. All right, who's up next? If you, will, if you will notice that uh, your efficiency as a class to get up there, get done, and get out determines how long we go tonight. Buy a little time when you're setting up here. A couple quick questions for you, right? So, how many people are amazed at how fast that you go when you come up and present, or how people speak, right? Uh, anybody, you know, at getting a, uh, a uh, the realization that I wrote all this stuff in paper, but geez, you know, when I practiced it, it took me this long, and when I came up and said it, it take me this long. Why is that? Nervous. You're nervous. Yeah, because people are nervous, right? You get up and look, oh my god, I got it all in. Did I save it already? And you come up with a very short amount of time. Conversely, uh, had, did, has anybody planned this out and said, geez, I think I got all like uh, I got it all what I need to say, but you came in way longer. Why does why do you think that that, that is? Daniel, let, let me ask you. You're uh, you're always one to share. Yeah. Nervous? Yeah. I actually had it right under mm -hmm. at home. In my comfort level. There you go. And then you get out in front of everybody. Right, and things change up. Right, these are one of the. This is one of the reasons that I think it's important for mm -hmm. us to do this, and and really kind of turn up the heat a little bit because it's one thing when you're on your computer and you timed it out and everything's all awesome, but you put yourself in, in a more of a pressure situation, right, a different situation than you're accustomed to being by yourself, and the circumstances change and the results change. Right, so these are the lessons that uh, I want you to take out. All right, so this whole timed exercise is very purposeful. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, it's just one of the other things that I, I want you to pay attention to as the rest of your colleagues present. Have I buy enough time? Yeah. Um, First of all, I'm going to start with the video. My name is Michael Lewis. One second. Hold on a second. Let me yeah. uh, Three, get your two, accurate timing three, here. Two, one. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Let's start with <laughs> many, many people have problems waking up in the morning. That's one of the cases when they create an alarm that slaps you, slaps the hell out of you, and you wake up. My product. Is a bed that when the alarm clock it, it's connected with Bluetooth, when the alarm clock goes off, it stiffens the bed automatically, making it rock hard, making it impossible to stay and like, oh, five minutes more in the bed. No, no, no. My product, there has been other products. There's another one that ejects you from the bed, another one that regulates the temperature. I didn't want to risk being burned or being frozen to death in my bed or even being broken a leg whilst I go out there. So, my product, what it does, it generates an uncomfortable situation. So you have to wake up of your bed to do something and like to be productive. You're, you're gonna wake up, you're not gonna stay and like procrastinate in your bed and you're gonna wake up, the, well, you're gonna wake up in the morning and you wanna go somewhere else, but the place is you get to get the hell out of your bed and like start your work. <coughs> and that's it, that's my product.
102. Aaron, go here, do your evaluation. All right, please get your votes in. Did you happen to name your product? I call it the wake up call. The wake up call? Yeah. It's in the process of naming, but that's the, the final name I got. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and your colleagues, I think you come in uh, somewhere between an eight and a nine. We'll call it an eight and a half. All right, very good. Okay, I said clap worthy. Very good. And we need to reset. All right, how's it going, everyone? My name is Tyler, and today I'm going to talk to you about my idea, the Ox case. I couldn't tell you how many times I'd go to my friend's house or their car to play music, only to find that their auxiliary cord would either be missing or broken. Or on the off chance that they actually had an auxiliary cord, I'd always have to take off my phone case because it would never fit. The aux case looks to solve both of these problems by being the first smartphone case that has a built-in retractable auxiliary cord. This product is designed for people that are constantly playing music at home, in their car, at work, or at parties. Every college student nowadays has a speaker in their house, which is why I want to target that specific niche. Um, by being a durable yet affordable product, the Aux case can enhance your music sharing experiment, your experience with the uh, mobility of your smartphone case. Thank you. Fifty seconds, right on the nose. Please get the rest of your votes in, please. All right, Tyler, I think we're going to call that a nine. Very good. Ready? Hi everyone, I'm Haley. I'd like to introduce you to Drift a travel search engine that focuses on the transportation aspect of traveling. Right now, current websites like Orbit and Expedia focus on flight, hotel, and car rental, but Drift would focus on purely just transportation. So it would find efficient and inexpensive routes, whether it be by bus, train, flight, maybe even scooter. You could find an easy user friendly format like this, where you could also find the most affordable day to travel on. And then at the top, you can choose different options with those tabs with different modes of transportation and different cities nearby. You can also put in, um, excuse me, yes. And use this search engine to have an affordable and simple way to travel and drift to your next adventure. We came in at a 102. Please do your evaluation. Mm -hmm. 
My name is Taylor Heima, and my idea kind of stemmed from a personal need and want that a coworker and I developed. And so this is a picture of me and some of my friends snowboarding, and we are addressing a need for communication between group activities. So how many of you either snowboard or have a hobby or something that you do with your friends? Okay, great. So the common problem that I noticed was that helmets and um, vehicles or whatever that you're doing in your activities prohibit you from communicating with these people. So we developed this sort of Bluetooth application that enables you to talk inside your headphones while engaging these activities, whether you're on the slopes or um, riding dirt bikes, which is something that we do as well. And so basically the product will have a Bluetooth base, base with an application and it'll also enable you to listen to music with your friends. Um, so you can listen to the same thing. It's hands-free. It encourages safety in case you guys get lost and it's fun. And um, so it solves a bunch of your problems while you are communicating and then my hope is also to take this to the sports industry. Um, I used to play soccer, and so it would enable you to talk to your teammates as well. And so that would be a revolutionary change. Okay. 109. <clears throat> Please do your evaluations now. Thank you. Please get the last two evaluations in. You got a 10. Very good. Hi, everybody. My name is Maurice, and uh, I've got a question. How many of you play the instrument? Yes, so many of you. There was can imagine how it's like to play. So, recently I've discovered that the best way uh, to, uh, to develop the skills is to play with other person, and uh, that's why I developed the app called iJam. So basically, it's the app uh, which uh, helps find you the local musician. Uh, you you create the uh, you create your profile. Uh, you uh, submit your uh, uh, favorite artist, you play the instrument you play, and you can uh, try to uh, schedule schedule the meeting. Uh, after the meeting, after the meeting, meeting you can evaluate and review people after, uh, after the review. You can get the feedback, and what's important, you share the knowledge and you learn from each other. And after the few few sessions, you basically are the uh, rock star. Thank you very much. Good, you came in at one oh three. Please do your evaluation now. What are you playing? What are you playing? I play the rock music and the blues. But why instrument? Oh, electric guitar. Electric guitar? Yeah. You know, I have an electric guitar in the studio in Del Mar. I'm a hack drummer. I wanted so. to broke mine, but my friends said they couldn't show up. 
Do you like uh, mariachi music? <laughs> Get your uh, presentation out of it. No, I'm, I, I don't have any PowerPoint. Okay, so we'll knock. Let me just knock that out. We can see the different button. What song? Uh, I, I tried to say the famous uh, movie with Antonio uh, Banderas, you know, the one time in Mexico. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Mess, and I'm an exchange student for de from Denmark. Uh, and while I've been here in America, I've uh, experienced a lot of outlays with all my friends, which comes from restaurant visits, uh, trips to Vegas, um, and, he, and and when you when you have outlays, it's it's often hard to collect because you either forget it or it's a small amount. Um, so I want to make a, an application where, which allows you to to make a profile um, where you um, connect it to your bank account, and then uh, you can in in the application you are able to create groups with the people you have uh, been to a restaurant with, um, and it uh, will help you divide the, the amount you have uh, you have paid for with your friends, so they can simply simply uh, swipe and pay. Um, uh, yeah. That's basically it. <laughs> All right, 54 seconds. Please do your evaluation. What do you what do you call that thing? Make my budget. Make my budget. Yeah. Hey, do you need to? Uh, yep. You need access this. All right. I meant they like it. As an eight, got an eight. It's not mine. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. My name is Bruno, and the product is eGift, a group sourcing personalized gifts. So let me tell you a short story. We are like eight uh, exchange students sharing the same house, and we already have like six birthdays. And the problem we faced was, oh, sorry. We have a man or a woman, like, girl who is like the money collector. So being the money collector, and you, it's time consuming, and you always like chasing around after people and tell them, like, pay me like, you know, the right time. So and what I'm trying here is to combine it with a crowdfunding, uh, like raising funds at the same time online. So you don't need to like chase people around, you know. Uh, so that's the way how you convert a common problem into an excellent marketable opportunity. So uh, we are changing the money collector role to a mm. gift champion. So he's the man who got the idea. He wants to like. Uh, we want to make a present. 
and splitting up the cost into smaller pieces. And finally, personal card, and that's it. Everyone happy. <laughs> Good. Uh, 114, please evaluate Bruno's idea. <coughs> please, everybody, do get your responses in. I've got a little ticker that tells me how many people have responded. And subsequently, with some simple math, I can figure out how many have not. I'm going to call it a nine. Very good. My name is Roberto Uribe, and my product is called uh, Fingerprint Lock. It's a lock that uses your fingerprint instead of a combination or key. So since I commute to school and work, uh, when I go to the gym, I sometimes have to shower there. And three times I got locked out, twice because I forgot the combination, and once because I lost the key inside the gym. And so I had to be saved by the front desk with some bolt cutters. And so unless I lose my fingers, you know, that's going to solve my problems. <laughs> All right, you came in 42 seconds. Please do your evaluation. Hi everybody, my name is AJ, and uh, this is my solution for a problem. So, how many of you guys ever uh, uh, would like to stand up on the club and couldn't get in and stand in line forever? How many people wanted to ball service but had the problem that it was too expensive or the group was too small? So I'm coming up with the iPhone app, which will be able to share ball service with uh, other parties, to match up to different clubs. 
So we want to skip the waiting line and also make easy payment through the app. So you have no people who just jump out of the bill at the end. Um, so this is how it works. Uh, you uh, download the app um, for free. You press the profile for Facebook. Um, you pick your nightclub and you just select your group under profile pictures and then uh, you uh, choose your payment method. And uh, as a result, you have ball service, hang out with friends, network, and uh, have no people step out and have fun and save money. And uh, that's where I am. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Very good. One minute even. And please rate this idea. Please get the rest of your evaluations in. Slack ass, I'm going to just Yeah, it did. Like, I can make it all graded, but I just want to give somebody like a, how they, how they, how they, like, uh, by the way. 35. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Luis, and my uh, business idea is basically the Uber for a grass cutting. Uh, basically, Ecograss is an eco-friendly and fast grass cutting service. Uh, this is how it works. The customer uses the app and pays for their lawn to be cut. And then uh, the nearest um, grass cutter is going to come within an hour. Maybe they're going to be able to cut your grass. And then uh, once it's done, the money is transferred to the grass cutter, and a small portion is going to be uh, transferred to the business. And instead of using lawnmowers, we're going to be using push mowers. And the reason why is because the lawnmowers are a lot more dangerous compared to the push mowers. Uh, they're safer, uh, doesn't use any pollution, no noise. And the grass uh, clippings are good for the, the fertilizer for the lawn. And also, they're easier to transport. Um, also, it means that no trucks are going to be needed. So what that means is more and more people could uh, work for this company instead of having a truck. One minute, 14 seconds. Please evaluate Echograss. Has anybody ever pushed one of them old school timey things? <laughs> you could probably make that part of CrossFit and like charge people to come cut grass with them. Maybe someone help me with the Apple computer. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Could I could I instead use the photo here? Sure. The camera. I'm not sure if it's working my Windows computer, but Thank you. 
Can you imagine if I let y'all go five minutes on this presentation? Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, overnight. <laughs> All right, are we set? Okay, my name is Johannes, and that's my idea. It's a Photoball 360. Um, it's simply a camera that you can throw around to other people. And the idea is uh, because most of you guys may have a GoPro camera, <coughs> the wide-angle view of this camera is awesome. And uh, but still, if you like, if you're in Grand Canyon, you still have to move your camera around to make a video to get all on your own photo. And also, if you have a selfie, there's always someone in the middle who's holding a stick, and this looks weird, in my opinion. So that photo ball, um, you can throw it in the air. It will take a picture of everything, because it's like lots of cameras in it. And yeah, that's it. So it's all around, It's an all-around vision camera. It is also waterproof. It has the shock-absorbing shell that it won't get broken. There's a height sensor in it, which will make the photo at the highest point. And you can also switch into the video mode. Sorry. All right. One minute, 12 seconds. Please evaluate Photoball 360. See this thing work. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it'd be interesting. Yeah, I don't know what the cameras on that stuff. No, <laughs> Is it the one that says Mac USB? Yeah, so you put on from Mac button. All right, guys, listen up. I don't know where it is. <laughs> Why is it on the USB stick? Yeah, it's a flash drive. And it's not that old one. It's below where nothing has changed. Scroll down some more. Yeah, it's on the USB stick. Yeah, <laughs> Hello, classmates. My name is Cody Brents, and I would like to tell you that the price for textbooks 
is too damn high. <laughs> because of this, students do not like to pay full price for the textbooks. Students do like, however, Spotify and Netflix. Does anybody here binge watch Netflix or Netflix and chill? <laughs> so I'm making best texts. What I want to do is collaborate with uh, publishers and schools everywhere to create a subscription-based platform that gives students the ability to access all of their textbooks for every class as an ebook on a subscription basis. It would be a flat rate per semester or quarter, which you can pay as a student or it's covered in your tuition. And that is Best Text. Thank you. Very good. 55 seconds. Please rate best text. How many do we have? We got uh, two, oh, another eighteen. How many did already? 28. Okay. You might have to use the app to send out for more beer. Yeah. <laughs> hey. So you got a 10, Cody. Very good. Thank you. Good work. and me and you guys, we have something in common. We are millennials, and like every other generation, there are characteristics which make us different to other generations. We don't necessarily need to own a house or a car or a luxury bag. Instead, we tend to borrow things instead of owning them. So we are generation no ownership. Also, this can be proved by the success of Airbnb and Uber. Also, there's a trend going on um, that People are trading their clothes. This um, certain company in, in Germany has um, 8 million users already. So that I thought about combining those two trends so that you could look for keywords like black, black dress size. And then it shows up like results where you can borrow those things from other people in your area. So people would provide their products. You would um, rent them. And the company, like the platform, would get a certain amount of it. Sounds like a win-win situation, doesn't it? Thank you. <laughs> Very nice. One minute, one second. Please rate Saran's performance. Your colleagues rate you a 10 by a landslide. Very good, very good. Come on, hello. Okay. Come on. Gutierrez, and uh, my goal is to make the lives of all college students and people like me a bit easier. Um, I know Thanksgiving and winter break is coming up, which means uh, <coughs> many of us are going to be coming back home to spend uh, the holidays with our families. <coughs> for some of that, for some of us, that means that for some of us that means driving for one to two hours, and for others that maybe um, <coughs> seven to eight hours. With that being said, it kind of sucks that. Uh, it kind of sucks when you're stuck with uh, paying for all the gas on top of being bored out of your mind for hours on end. So, <clears throat> so that's what made me come up with Ditch. Um, 
pretty much a ride share app that lets you travel long distances with people that are already heading in the same direction. Driver saves money on gas and gets a new friend with, gets a new friend to ride with. Uh, <clears throat> passenger also saves on the price of traveling while meeting someone uh, new. Um, this would integrate Instagram, ride sharing, um, Snapchat users will uh, be able to create profiles and post pictures of their experiences. Um, Venmo and PayPal would also be uh, options uh, as far as payment, um, all of which would accommodate to the lifestyle of a typical college student. One minute, 19 seconds. Please evaluate Hitch. Think that you learn uh, the most from people who are smart, uh, smarter than you. Okay. How many of you guys would pay thousands of dollars uh, for personal training when you get older? Or think that you would? Um, so I used to work at 24 Hour Fitness and LA Fitness, and a lot of personal trainers there work on commission. So they're more focused on sales rather than helping their clients some of the time. So I want to create a gym where uh, personal trainers are free for everybody. So when you show up to the gym, uh, you get a free spotter, you get free diet plans, uh, nutrition tips, etc. So all the guys uh, can get yoked, <laughs> um, girls can get hotter, um, and personal trainers can stop focusing on their commission, but really focus on helping the clients get to uh, you know where they want to be a lot faster. So. Be a gym where everybody's like better shape. And that's, uh, that's my idea. One minute and 12 seconds. Please evaluate Swole. My friend, you got an eight. The class likes it as an eight. I'm Laureen and I want you to, to present you my idea. It's called Come Together and it's an application that can be used by refugees and people who want to help them. 
Um, because of the civil war in Syria, there are a lot of refugees coming to Europe right now. Fortunately, most of them have a smartphone with them, and in Germany, for example, there, there are a lot of people who want to help them, but they don't know how. Therefore, I think this application is useful to bring people who want to help and people who need help together. The app consists of four main parts, so the first button is the long button. It should have refugees to find someone who can help them with homework or with a new language. Second, there is the join button. It will help refugees to find someone who can join them, for example, for public agencies. The third button is the assisting button, who can help um, people who offer the right and people who need a right to bring them together so they can share a car. The fourth button is the share button. So refugees can offer them maybe clothes or furniture or things for their children, and people who don't need their things anymore, they can share it. Um, the app also has a GPS function, so you can send your area where you're offering a searching. And yeah, thank you for your attention. All right, one minute and 20 seconds. Please evaluate, come together. You have earned a 10 from your colleagues. There you go. Come on, move up. Come on. Please. Okay, um, my name is Katrine, and I invited the Shape Duel app. Um, to use the app, you have to pay one to five dollars, and then you can collect points. In the end, the twenty percent, the best twenty percent, get rewarded. So what is the Shape Duel? Um, it's an IS app that is combined with the already existing Fitbit. By using the daily fitness challenges, like for example, walking stairs instead of taking the elevator, um, or working out in the gym, you can collect points. Then with the points you collect, you can challenge your friends, and um, the best 20% as I already said, get rewarded with cash prizes. Um, people are going to be divided into different fitness levels so that it's equal for everybody. Um, therefore, the aim of the Shape Duel is to motivate people to do more sport and to live healthier. Um, and this motivation has to be supported by the rewarding system. So thank you for your attention. All right. One minute, five seconds. Please evaluate Shape Duel. Shape Tool has earned a 10 by your peers. Very good. Does the peer evaluation count towards your grade? I'm sorry? Does the peer evaluation it does count not. towards your grade? It just gives you some media gratification on it. I wonder how I did. Now you know. At least that's what you're. <laughs> What do you think that your colleagues, what your colleagues think that you did? Uh, how does this go? <laughs> my own PCO. Thank you. 
Okay. Hey guys, my name is Bastian, and um, I want to introduce you into my business idea. Hopefully, it's, uh, it sounds not uh, a bit lame because we already heard another business idea that's a bit similar to mine. Um, yeah, my idea is a food uh, or better bottle delivery service. The idea is to deliver bottles in less than 60 minutes. Uh, where in student cities like Münster, and um, because the most of the students have no car to carry carry heavy cases. Um, the system works a bit similar to Uber because the drivers are not employees. The drivers are like Uber driver, with the difference that they um, yeah, deliver cases. The customer gets uh, um, uh, orders with the application and the driver gets this information to his uh, or her phone. The driver, wants, uh, the driver is waiting at the storehouse, loads the cases in the car and brings them in less than 60 minutes over to the customer. What's the profit? The profit is for delivery is 12 euro, the retail, re retail price is 19 euro and the purchase price is 13. And the mi minimum order quantity is two cases. Uh, the market volume, for example, Münster has 50,000 students, that's where I'm from, and um, when I have a market share of 1%, it makes 500 orders each month, and the profit is 1,000 euro. Thanks for your attention. One minute, 33 seconds. Please evaluate. All right, please evaluate. You eighteen of you have evaluated. So like this part like where I ask, please evaluate. This is where I expect everybody to contribute. Okay? Thank you. So if you have not done so so far, please contribute. 18. Still at 18. Hi, everyone. My name is Bill, and I want to create a non-profit organization uh, due to intrinsic uh, motivation. Uh, I want to uh, create awareness about global warming, as many other non-profit organizations do, but instead of doing it uh, to parents and older people, I want to do it uh, while people are still young. So I want to go to primary school and teach them how what is global warming. I want to do that by giving them a fun day where they can uh, buy a tree and plant them in the backyard of the home or at the school and thereby give them a day where they've been cheating a lot about photosynthesis and stuff like that. Um, and the revenue will, of course, come from the parents who buy the tree and keep them in the backyard. And that's why I can give awareness to global warming through the children so they know from the beginning. And when the children know it from the spill start, they might can solve the problem when they get older. Thank you. All right, 56 seconds. Please evaluate. Will be a nine. Thank you. How do you get the 
screen on No elevens. Okay, hello, I'm Ryan Buchanan, and I came up with an idea for a product called the Quick Wash. And it's pretty much just a miniature uh, washer and dryer that could fit under, say, this table, and it's on kind of a conveyor belt. So. Uh, the opportunity I saw for a product like this is folding laundry is awful. Washing clothes, of course, you need clean clothes. Drying the clothes, you can't wear the wet clothes. Folding and putting away the laundry, just terrible, worst thing in the world. So I decided that it would be a good idea to uh, make something that instead of taking a long time, uh, like on a normal laundry day, to fold and put away all your clothes in an hour or longer, you just kind of put one thing through the conveyor belt at a time, and it comes out at the end a few minutes later, nice and clean and dry, and you could just put one thing away at a time at the end of each day, instead of hours on end. And uh, I thought it would be good to be a volume-based system, and you could sell it to apartments or dorms or universities. Thank you. Very good. One minute and three seconds. Please evaluate quick wash. <laughs> So how many of y'all hit your knees on this damn power bar underneath this place every day? Yeah, oh happened. my god, who designed that? Could somebody please redesign, innovate in a better place to get a bounce on Yeah. Damn. We call that. Let's see. Right. I mean, the average out there are nine. Zach getting ready. Does anybody notice how noisy these damn chairs are? I really should sit in these chairs more often. To realize what you guys have to do yeah, back yeah, here. Yeah, some, some, some leverage over there, and you can actually turn them into a thing. Oh, there you go. A little low rider. Oh, wait. Not a little high boy seat. Is that how you get to school in the morning? Yeah. It's fun. Try sometime. <laughs> Okay. Good morning, or good evening, everybody. My name is Zach Hamilton. I'm the owner and uh, CEO of 
Houston Capital. My company acquires commercial properties that produce 12, 8 to 12 percent cash on cash returns for private investors. I myself have acquired over five commercial properties, specifically in, in retail shopping centers. What different in that produce over uh, 15 percent returns? What differentiate what differentiates us from the competition, like other investment companies, is that we we the, our investors, whatever property they purchase, is what they own. Most REITs are set up like stock companies where you own small percentages of portfolios, and it has like multiple multiple um, properties they own. And we uh, provide to our or what we provide is what you invest in is what you get. So like whatever property you invest in, that's what you own. Not all these other different types of like healthcare buildings and whatnot. And we understand how that your word matters. And with us, we are very specialized and we understand how the industry operates and we can identify flaws and potentials of investments. We have the tools necessary to perform today's complex real estate industry. And through Hemison Capital, we can make America great again. So we can help you reap the rewards that investment parties have to offer. So let's roll. One minute, 38 seconds. Please evaluate this opportunity. Um, if I just use this to bring it up on the screen. Of course. Yep. You hit that dock button, that'll put up the, uh, on the, to your right there, on this little keys, the lit up keys. Yeah. DOC? Took a while, sorry. That's all right. Takes a little getting used to. And then you have slide that little gizmo. You Shall I? Please. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Daniel. Now, if you have been fortunate enough to go surfing in the deep blue, um, you would have probably experienced how tiring it is actually paddling all the way out, out past the way to the outside. I personally enjoyed surfing, and I've experienced this problem myself, though. So this motivated me to come up with a creative solution, introducing SoulSurf. Now, SoulSurf is an innovative new surfboard that has integrated a, a small propeller into the bottom of the board. Now, this propeller will be powered by solar panels integrated onto the top as the predominant um, energy source. Um, hence the name SoulSurf, Solar Surf. Now, um, this technology here will actually enable the surfer and assist them um, as they paddle out, which will enable them to enjoy more surfing and not so much paddling. And so also, we're very excited about this product because there aren't many products, or there are no products in the market currently that are an affordable, offer an affordable power surfboard using solar energy. So, spend more time riding, less time paddling. Thanks. <laughs> All right, one minute, three seconds. Please evaluate SoulServe. All right, please listen up. Okay, please 
here loves macaroni and cheese and my performance is end alcohol. <laughs> so my idea is to create a macaroni and cheese bar, which is it's a completely customizable um, macaroni and cheese bar. So you go in and you choose your noodle, your cheese, your meat, your vegetables, anything else. And then you can choose your wine, beer, whatever you want. And then there's going to be a live performance going on, mainly from local bands, because who doesn't like local music? Um, and it's, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thirty seconds on the nose. Please evaluate the mac and cheese bar. Has anybody just got a little hungrier? Yeah. All right, who's up next? Come on, we got eight more to go. All right, you guys, please listen up. Let's see, uh, the mac and cheese bar is coming in at a nine. Very good, mac and cheese. Three. All right, hello, my name is Thomas, uh, Thomas McGinn, and I'm with uh, Hydrate to Operate. So firefighters, they're required to stay hydrated while they're on the job. It's actually in their standards and codes. So uh, the, the study that I read up on is they did a study on them, and they saw that uh, most firefighters were actually significantly uh, dehydrated. And they're, they're required to be hydrated, and what does that say for the rest of us? So my product is the H2O monitor. It's a band that goes around your wrist, and it monitors uh, the water that uh, is exerted from your skin, and see if you're hydrated or not. Right, thank you. Thirty-seven seconds. Please evaluate. Hydrate to operate. H two O band. Who's up next? How many people did not go yet? Please raise your hand. All right, Hydro Band has earned an eight from your colleagues. Oh, tech support. He's on it. I want the mac and cheese bar now, man. I got like mac and cheese on the brain. Oh, dude, I did this the last one. We're out of here. I'm going to get a burger, some mac and cheese, and a beer. Can you get a beer on campus? Yeah. yeah okay. Oh, that's the OG's, right? Yeah. It's not a lot of space. I don't use beer. Right? <laughs> All right, please listen up. Elodie, listen up. This will leave our last one. Hello everyone, my name is Elodie, and uh, my idea is to develop a new travel service for students and expats. It will be based in Shanghai because, uh, well, I've lived there. Uh, I know it's super complicated to arrange trips in China, and I know there's a potential market for my service. So you will say, wait, aren't there already travel agencies there? Yeah, of course they are, but they are um, targeted to Chinese people and run by Chinese people who don't know how to meet the needs of foreigners. For example, they will just take you to tourist places and temples and stores and make you buy fake overpriced to pay products. So we don't want that. So my service is all about providing real fun, thrill, and unusual adventures to people uh, to take you to uncommon places in nature. Uh, for example, sleep in places you would never think of as on top in a Buddhism monastery on top of a mountain or camping on the Great Wall of China. And do exist exciting outdoor activities such as hiking in marvel sceneries or water rappelling or underground river kayaking and so on. So that's my thank you. All right, one minute and fifteen seconds. Please evaluate this project. And I will ask again, is anybody not presented? Thank you. 
Oh, yeah. Smaller class. <laughs> That would be you have, you have earned a 10 from your colleagues. Same class or different? Same class. Reset. Hi, my name is Karina, and I'm presenting my idea. It's called Budnology. It stands for Budget Technology. So it happens to me all the time that I go to the gym or I come to school, and I forget my headphones or my charger. And I thought it would be cool to have like a vending machine that just makes all those products accessible to college students that were all on a budget, so I know we saw them at the bookstore, but it would be cool to just have stuff that are like under $5 since you only need it for that day or for a certain amount of hours. So I thought of a vending machine that could be placed at college campuses or at gyms that could sell um, headphones, chargers, or things like that. So headphones would be not the best quality, but since you only need it for a certain amount of time, people wouldn't really mind. Um, they would only be um, under $5 or so. And additionally, I thought that I could incorporate advertising onto the vending machine for a secondary revenue stream. And that's it. All right, 52 seconds. And please evaluate this project. Eat, drink, and sleep. It's about one and a half a year. What are your colleagues that have given you an eight? Okay, so this is my idea. It's called Follow Me. So it's a luggage um, that can follow you. Um, so uh, the way it works is by electric assistance. So you have um, a remote control and the luggage can follow you and also you can adapt the speed to your pace. So that idea is new and it's useful because you don't have to carry the, the luggage because sometimes it's heavy and uh, sometimes you're lazy. So, uh, yeah, so the idea comes from breaking and making connection. So people think luggage should be carried, of course, because there is no other way. But they are too lazy or too lazy. So we are always searching something easier or more comfortable. So that's why I imagine like an, in, the inclusion of a remote device to in the luggage that can follow. So that's my idea. All right, please evaluate this project. One minute and five seconds. Anybody else who is not present presented? Anyone? Last call, presentation, anyone? All right, so how do you think that you did? Right. What was the big revelation from this exercise? Anybody? Listen up. Pitching a business in one minute is very difficult. Any other revelations? Jack? Yeah, it never comes out the way you want, no matter how hard you practice. I would disagree with you. I would think that, that it seems like it doesn't come out how you want it to, but with enough practice, you can make a presentation fit in the time allocation. I believe that you can no, make I a presentation. No, I mean, not the time, just like the way you word things. Any comments on that comment? Uh, I would say don't worry about the exact wording. Just have the concepts in the right order and just say them. Let's work out the big concept. So what I'm hearing is that it never comes out how you want it. I assure you, as one who has done hundreds of presentations, it can. 
presenting in a different language to us. <laughs> <laughs> it's a challenge. What's the, uh, can you help me uh, understand the, the why? Because I mean, when, when we speak, I, I always understand. Yeah, the thing that uh, fucks up your presentation is when you're searching for a word. Mm -hmm. I mean, that happens to me in German, that happens to me, uh, that happens to me in German too. So in English, you just search more often for a word, and that interrupts your presentation more often. You start getting totally dizzy. <laughs> Nicole, your comment? Well, I was going to say that sometimes like, it may not come out the way you want, but it doesn't mean it was bad. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be different, but your audience could just say it. Any other great revelations? No, no we're more, we all um, more or less the same age and um, in kind of the same social situation, but our styles of presenting and business ideas are so diverse. Mm -hmm. so I have hope for iteration. Yes, I have hope as well. <laughs> Anybody have any other comments? I really like to see um, what people are passionate about because, like, everything um, people present are really related to like hobbies or interests. I think all the of the presentations are somehow like very interesting information. Mm -hmm. really nice to see that. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? Right? Is this as easy as it looks? Yeah. Right? Did anybody learn anything about themselves through this process? Come on, no great revelations, no aha moments. No? That's what I said. You're standing up for any language. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, uh, are, are, would you like to hear what I've learned this exercise? Yes. All right. So, it's it's very interesting to see you all work in groups, and then it's it's interesting for me to see the individual come up, right? I think uh, uh, some people are much more comfortable up here with a presentation than others. Even whether it's good presentation or bad presentation, I think some people just have better uh, skills for pre presenting. Would you agree? Yes. Right. Are these people that you should recruit to your group? Yes. Right. Now, if you out of everybody you got to see, Right? There are some people that are good presenters. There are some people that are not as good presenters. Right? This is one of the things that you were able to see through this exercise. Right? Um, one of the things I think that we've been able to see are people who can develop more interesting concepts than others. Agreed? Right? Um, who saw a concept that they were very much impressed with? Raise your hand. Don't have to say which one is. Right? Who saw a concept that they were not very impressed with? Right, and we saw all kind of different concepts. Right, so um, as it, uh, as we look at the individuals on our collective team, there are people who are just better at developing concepts, already at taking things and, and innovating and coming up with perhaps what the what uh, what you should be working on. Right, um, the the other thing is is the um, the level of, of by which that you individually evaluated this assignment. Right, so the explanation that I wrote on Blackboard on understanding this uh, this assignment, right? Everybody see it? Right? So um, so when you, um, with this in mind, I'm very interested in some of the choices that were made on whether to have visual presentation of some sort or to not, right? I, I was very interested in um, what appeared to be uh, either what you call it a level of commitment or your preparedness. Right, some people uh, appears as if they had scripts. Um, some people appears as if they timed themselves. Others appeared as if they winged it, and they were hoping that they was going to come in within that magic window. Right, so there was a lot of variance in presentation. Right, did you see the same types of things? Right, what are the things that you saw tonight that you thought, in general, that you thought made a great presentation? An age of some kind. Everyone left an age. Um, not the, you know, like right. They were a lot stronger. It was a lot more because they had mm -hmm. Any other observations? You know, connecting to the audience or something. Like if you have something that can sell for millions and millions of dollars, but not for this audience, it wasn't going to go over so well this class. I think people will block and really well with this class. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anybody else? Uh, just a good idea in general. Uh, ourselves themselves. Like, Maybe it wasn't the best presentation, but the idea was so good that it didn't matter. Right. So there's a there's a, a difference between a great idea and a great presentation, right? Sometimes you you can evaluate that idea like, hey, there's something there. Like they didn't do so good at presenting it, but again, there's some people that are great on the concepts 
and there are other people that, uh, that are stronger on the presentation, perhaps in the, the, the visual presentation of the concept, whether it's through video uh, or PowerPoint. Uh, was anybody um, uh, surprised at how few people used uh, used visuals or, or design or like sketched out what you were talking about? I, you know, with all the sketching, I would have supposed that we would have seen more prototypes or like a, hey, it looks like something like this. It was one of the things that I did notice. There's a lot of talking about things. It wasn't as many uh, uh, comps or prototypes. Sorry, we did have one demo with we did with the light scan. It was very impressive, right? Little uh, 3D modeling. Right. Any other great observations? People that believe in their in their uh, ideas, they made a better presentation. I believe. Mm -hmm. I agree too. I was going to say that Matt, when it looked like it was something you liked rather than something you just came up with to save yourself in this part. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> All right. So that passion, right? Pa passion permeates these presentations, right? Right? So finding somebody who's motivated, has something that drives them, it makes a difference. Right? If you had to do this all over again, what would you do different? Practice in front of the audience for you. Mm -hmm. So not just family and friends, but people who were that you don't know. Mm -hmm. Make sure you were solid out there. <laughs> the solidest. <laughs> well, do it totally different because I have my project, but uh, it was like he said it to go, grab it to go, but I just. I'm gonna make something different, so I just made it up there, you know. No, I already had it. Yeah, it's my problem. Yeah. yeah. Anybody else? I just had some kind of support because when I got there, I completely blanked and just stated my idea and left. Yeah. So, like, I wish I had note cards or something, so I remembered what I was talking about when I practiced. Mm -hmm. so that good. Any other? If I had to do it all over again, I'd pick my idea from someone who has no idea about it and see what we would like. I understood it well, and we mm -hmm. say that. Yeah. Anyone else? I probably would have like taken a poll and said it's that this is the problem. So taking a poll to see if the problem came up for everyone else. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Anybody else? Zach? I probably would put a couple more facts in there, just so it's easier for me to follow, mm -hmm. rather than trying to remember in my head all of it. What else? No. Probably <laughs> trying to sneak one of my friends who don't know into your class so that I look at him when I'm presenting instead of just being like trying to look at someone I don't know. Mm -hmm. So that you just stare at him to look at everyone. Very, very good. Doing a lot more. A lot more. <laughs> <laughs> I mean like just instead of just doing it once when you're up there. No, but here, like it's different when you do it on your house. Yeah. I do a lot of presentations, you know. I mean, you can get used to it, but if you leave, like I used to have a speech class, and I was getting pretty good because we used to do it like every day, every class. But you, you stop doing that, that kind of takes a skill away. You know, so it's something that you gotta be doing it, you know, with practice a lot, you know. All right. Any other last comments? Yeah, yeah. I would say in my uh, presentation was like fully, or this is supposed to be a music in my presentation. Yeah, it's supposed to be my the timing because I uh, found like a, a song that uh, after the minute there is the first verse, mm -hmm. so I would know that I'm stuck. <laughs> yeah. Right. So all of these individual attempts. The last thing to I did is my everyone spoke English, English, English isn't their first language. Because I think it's hard enough but with the time restraint being so small, the pressure to like think of the words was to make incredibly difficult. I'm sure you were very challenged today with the language. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, okay. All right. So, uh, so uh, first of all, I'd like to congratulate uh, you all for, uh, for, for making uh, your, your various efforts, right? Obviously, some of us put more effort into this than others, right? So we're supposed to be very open, right? Some of you guys uh, and girls uh, just did an outstanding job. Uh, and admittedly, some of you came up a little shy today, you know? Um, and and, and I, I give you this feedback, right? And I'm not trying to add on a bad note, is I'm trying to set you up for success as you go into your group presentations, right? This was an opportunity for each of you to see how you were gonna do when you were up here. And now there's a group of you, right? Your group should look at your individual presentations and understand what your group members are strong with and, and, and what they're not strong with, right? 
Figure out how you're going to apply the skills and the resources that your group has to make your best group presentation. You saw up here a number of examples of things that worked very well. And you saw some things that didn't work nearly as well. So I hope that you take this learning from this experience and you apply it to your group presentations and that you are, uh, are, are as a group, very successful. Right? We will continue to raise the bar. Um, there will be very critical feedback and review on this presentation. Uh, and I, I, I do that because I want you to learn. I want you to be better. Right? I want you to uh, be successful, not only in this class, but when you leave here and you have to go do this in a real job, in a real life circumstance, where there are consequences for your performance. Yes? Um, so I just have two quick questions. First, Listen up, please. This um, project without a hundred percent of the people is not going to be scaled to something? No, uh, there will be, there's a larger number of total points available. Okay. Um, yeah, we've adjusted that through, uh, through class. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the second question is, obviously you don't have class next week. We do not. So the week after that, is that already when we're doing the presentation? No, the third, uh, we will have, uh, um, I have a speaker coming in, a brilliant guy who's one of my clients. Uh, and then uh, the 10th is our group presentations, right? And now the, my only concern about that would be timing, but I think it will be able to do it because I think with, I think we have 10 groups. I think it will time out. So I'm, uh, but we will do group presentations on the 10th and then we have the final exam on the 17th. Right, so first of all, raise your hand if you know we do not have class next week. Very good. I will not be here. You will not be there. We will all be somewhere else. If you come here, uh, you know, happy Thanksgiving. Right? <laughs> the week after that, that Thursday the 3rd, we will have a guest speaker. This does not mean that you don't have to be here, right? Because there could be a quiz. There could be something of a measurable value. This is not my class that you blow off, is what I'm trying to tell you. I know, like, I got real busy. I couldn't make it. You couldn't make it. You made it all semester. Class is at 4 o'clock on Thursday. You are expected to be here on the 3rd. Uh, the 10th is your group presentations. It'll be the same situation. Uh, you'll come up as a group. You'll get set up. You'll uh, you do your presentation. You'll be evaluated. We will live stream as well on there. On the 17th, there will be a final here in class. Yes, you have to come to class to take the final. Any other questions? Dan? Uh, I'm just wondering about the live. Do we have a choice? Of it not being live streamed. I mean, I was going to do another idea for this, but because of that aspect, and we haven't um, secured any of the property rights yet. Um, it sounds paranoid, but no, 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 no. It's uh, it's a, it's a very responsible question. Um, so my intent is to record this um, that the, that the individual in the group can see actually how they did. It's a great reference for me as I go back and, and review scoring. Um, it's also a great demonstration to others who are looking to our class, um, uh, either to evaluate how we, we're doing or those that want to take the class. So that's my intention yeah. behind it. Um, and I, I am very interested in you being able to leverage the group and the team here. So um, if you would like yours to not be recorded, let me know. We'll put you towards the end or maybe we'll start with you in the beginning or something like that because uh, my, my commitment is to you first. Um, and to you know, the ancillary uh, second. So if you will do not want your uh, idea or uh, your presentation recorded, please just let me know, and then I will make sure that we omit that. Thank you. Thank you. Else, you have a question? Uh, doesn't matter anymore. Okay. Anybody else? Can we see this video now? Yeah, it's on the YouTube channel. As soon as I shut it off, it'll it'll be up there. You can see how you did. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? You're awesome. Get out of here. Thank <laughs> you.